So la do me one favor. You will see um an icon on your phone. It has some sort of a plus video plus. Click on it and send me a request. Once you send me that request, I'm going to accept. Big shout out to everybody joining from Moyo to 18. 18 is one of the big, big, big superstar we need to watch out for coming out from Nigeria. He's very good at this craft. Um Abdullah, if you can hear me, click on the video icon beside your phone, then just send me a video request. I think it's okay that way. And I can also send you, I can also send you um, an invite. I just sent you an invite again. If you can accept, that's cool. If you can send me a request to join this video, that's cool. My brother, I think the last time we saw was in Egypt. You're looking good, brother. That's for you, um, Abdul Razak. Finally, finally, finally. Hello, 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 my people. Um, Mr. Jaffa, we yes, you need to brother. we need to see your face, please. The the yeah, I'm trying to set it up. Okay, okay, okay. Um let me accept oh, oh look at you it's been a long while brother <laughs> how are you i'm more it's like what you guys are eating in kaduna it's 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 i don't know i need to i need to touch down to kaduna <laughs> how are you doing my brother how are you doing Nice, nice to meet you again. Yeah. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful you, you honor my request. Thank you. Um, I'm so thank you very much. Uh, yes, I have been. Uh, I just came down, and, uh, so I have been on transit since morning. That's why I couldn't uh, do any good time. All right, Razak, Razak is also back. I know you know Razak. The last time we guys saw was in Egypt. This is Mr. Abdul Razak Karim. <laughs> Jaffa, I know. No, nice I, meeting you. I, it's nice meeting you. No, it's been a long time. Been a long time. Yeah, that was in 2019. Caught see the president. A big shout out to the president of Egypt, His Excellency Abdul Fattah El Sisi. We were fortunate to be amongst the hundred youths. That were selected across the continent to come for the African Presidential Leadership Program, and ever since then we've made formidable friendship. And here we are. I'm so grateful to have you here, and thank you guys for honoring me. So, before a brief introduction to you, I want to introduce what this space is all about. No this is Street and Cathedral. Uh, it is my personal space where God has actually bestowed it upon me to actually, you know make this place to be a positive use of the social media where um, we have a lot of entertainment going on with the use of social media but we don't want to also leave behind the educating and the enlightened aspect of the use engagement of it so this is where that comes in so you see street and cathedral seems to be more like um, an antithesis but not really if we look in depth the street there represents the voice of the common people uh, it represents um, what people will call as um, um, secularism, you know, secular thought, where everybody opinions matter. Cathedral represents the spirituality aspect of man, where we've come to understand that these are two sacred aspects of man where people don't joke with. The spiritual aspect of man is also part of what makes a man. So cathedral is not represents whatever you stand for but that spiritual aspect of humanity cannot be taken away and streets represent the voice that comes from we the citizen so you welcome on board um let me start my introduction by the first person who joined and that is mr abdul karim before network played a little trick there mr abdul karim has been 
pivotal in, in you know he has been a leading personality in the form of this policy engagement at all. I, I I followed his work for some time, but along the line, I have to be honest, Mr. Karim is going too professional for me to even understand that. <laughs> Baba is it seems as if Baba is going to take an appointment very soon. <laughs> I was getting to a point where I now said, okay, is an expert when it comes to that. And I want you to introduce yourself properly to the people because I might not be, you know, going nitty gritty into your portfolio but i don't want you to be offended so i'm going to give you a platform in order to speak and introduce yourself to people before i introduce the second person so go ahead sir <laughs> thank you mr dimitri you already uh, do a just you have done the justice to that introduction uh, i'm uh, my name is uh, karima brazak and uh, i'm just, just like any other person in nigeria and uh, we have just tried to be more interested in the policy because uh, i discovered that at some point if you are not interested in the policies of your country whether uh, any type of policy whether trade government or any policies whether directly or indirectly the policy will affect you whether you know it whether you like it or not it's going to affect you there is no there is nothing you can do so is it now for you as a citizen to show interest in what the government is doing to be able to contribute to your own quarter in whatever way to the development of that particular country so that just <laughs> what um, I have to say that is ladies and gentlemen that is humility at its peak right there because it's a my he's a man of uh, many degrees and characters so moving yeah. to my right and this is mr Abdullah Jafar. Mr. Abdullah Jafar, I wouldn't want to go um, emotional with his introduction. I would try as much as possible to be professional because we share some sort of um, friendship that, you know, span beyond. Everybody is actually my friend. I'm um, someone who believe that when I meet people, I have access to 1,000 libraries, books I may not be able to read in my entire life. So I like to engage with people's mind with their, you know, deep conversation. So Mr. Abdullah Jaffa has been that kind of person. We've been engaging in deep conversation right from Egypt. And he is a CEO. I can tell you personally, he is a voracious leader. And I mean leader, he's a, he's a student of knowledge. Um he is he, is a father, is you know, is many things. So Mr. Abdullah Jaffa, kindly introduce yourself so I don't go to the arena you don't want to touch and I don't also touch the arena you want to be touched. Uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting me and uh, for the introduction. You know, we are all Nigerians and looking for a way to make uh, uh, the country and everyone better. So my name is uh, Abdullah Jafar Abdullah, uh, a chemical engineer and uh, an entrepreneur. Um, I'm the founder of MS Chemicals Limited and using uh, things and things uh, engineering limited. Um, I'm based in Kaduna. We have presence in um, most of the northern states and Niger Republic, Cameroon, and Chad. Um, you know, this is a great topic uh, because. It really talks about what is paying us as entrepreneurs, as business people in Africa, uh, the government policies, AFCFTA, uh, stuff like that. And I'm really glad to hear from the policy people and to my brother that has been in touch with what is happening in Africa and beyond. What he has, he has seen, what is here and he has seen what is there too. Uh, so this is a learning platform for me uh, and also to share with my little experience and uh, what is going on and how we can profit from uh, the African and Indian business. All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you Jafar. So I'm going, to, I'm going to throw this question to you. And this is now we getting into the heart of the conversation. 
Jaffa, please pick this up. Since your business span across um, the northern Nigeria, I know some states in Nigeria as well, and you have presence in the Nigeria Republic and Chad. So now let is the let this be the question now. Africa markets cannot be ignored in the global space. So how are we now I want you to speak as a government personnel and from your business perspective? How are we treating these markets? This delicate market that should serve as also prospect to the African people. As have we been mismanaging it? Or has it been properly managed in that perspective? And let us drag it to the Nigerian context in your conversation. So pick it up, Sam. Then afterwards, Mr. Karim will, will go. Uh, okay. okay, thank you for your question. Uh, I know this market uh, is over a billion uh, population. If you are talking about Central Africa, even West Africa, the population is. Uh, more than around 400, 500 million people, you know, and um, if you look at every country in Africa, every country without any exception, we don't trade between us in Africa. We trade outside Africa. For instance, uh, the trade within Africa is less than 10%. Nigeria, for instance, uh, we produce soya bean. We take it to the U.S. and Egypt will go to the U.S. and buy Nigerian soya instead of the trade to be between Nigeria Egypt, and Nigeria. Egypt directly. Hmm. Now, look at uh, crude oil, for instance. Ghana will buy Nigerian crude from the United States of America, which is just uh, a strong throw. Uh, if I put it that way, from Calabar, from Potakot to Ghana. Uh, now, these are uh, even big businesses. Look at the small businesses, the small entrepreneurs, small businesses like that. The, the regulation is not there. Like the governments in, within Africa are not intentional about boosting trade with it. A lot of businesses, a lot of uh, uh, barriers, mm. tariff barriers, non tariff barriers, and a lot of stuff that have okay. been hindering businesses. Okay, okay, okay. Abdullah, you... please hold your thought for one second because we're still going to come back to you. I want um, Karim to pick the conversation from there so we can also move forward because you've already been touching the in depth analysis. So I, that's why I said you should hold your thought for one second. So, Abdul Karim, the question still goes to you. The market called Africa, it's very large, enormous, and should serve as a prospect to the African people. How has this been treated? Has it been managed properly or it has been mismanaged? And let us drag that conversation to the Nigerian context, from the broad spectrum to the narrow spectrum, which is the Nigerian context. Thank you, sir. You know, let me start with the uh, 20, 20, uh, 2014 or so, or to 2015, when uh, the federal government of Nigeria closed the border. And you know that most of the neighboring countries in Nigeria and around the West Africa depend mainly on Nigeria, especially the you know, Republic of Nigeria and all those countries. They depend on Nigeria. But what they got, the first policy, one of the first policy when the previous administration came to Benin in 2015 was to close all those borders. So what that means to the, uh, uh, the, the, the in, uh, African uh, trade means that uh, those people depended on Nigeria to feed, to increase their own revenue every year. They were unable to do that. That is an implication. So they are depending on Nigeria uh, uh, population to increase their own revenue. So when Nigeria did that, it affected them. So they have to look for another way. So these are some of the issues that is currently ongoing. And Nigeria has always, uh, Nigeria uh, uh, one of the countries that has also signed the African Free Trade Agreement and some other things. But if you look at it critically, most of the Trading like my um, um, uh, Gavar, uh, Gavar has said, is not actually uh, between Nigeria and the uh, and other African countries. Most of them are from other European countries, which is one of the main concerns, especially in the current uh, uh, dispensation. Mm. 
Okay. So now let's move. Let's move ahead. Karim, you'll be the one to pick this post. Now we are going to taxation policy. I, I wrote down Finance Act 2019, which is more like the profound taxation policies. Now, as a business, as okay, as a as, as a person of policy now, what are those stringent policies that you feel that taxation policies has also contributed to the businesses, either to the growth or to the inhibition of businesses in Nigeria? I think if you look at the, the taxation, if you look at taxation itself, it's one of the key revenue uh, of government of Nigeria. But before you look at the taxation, look at the uh, the ministry that is responsible for the taxation. The current government came into being in Nigeria. You know what happened in 2020 and what the government is facing in terms of uh, low revenue. Can you hear me? Because I'm saying yeah, something yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Uh, on I can can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you perfectly. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, because I see something on the screen like uh, yeah, talking it's different, the, uh, but we the can screen. hear you clearly. So, yes, very well. So, some of this, uh, the government, okay, because of the introduction of the reduction of subsidies and some other policy measures that the government has done, they have to introduce a lot of taxation to increase itself. They review some of the system. Nigeria has a lot of tradition. We have company income tax, especially that the company, the, the, the SMA or company businesses. Mr. Karim, I think we lost you. Um, the network is broken. I think your network is slow. So before, while you are that fixing that, before you come on board, um, Abdullah, please pick the question. Now, from the businessman angle, the taxation policy finance act 2019 how has this played a pivotal role in either the growth of your business or the inhibition of your business oh well, mr Karib, please just hold on. yeah we can hear you now but just hold on let oh. um we were waiting for you so i showed the question to the abdullah then you take it back again okay all right um well i i, I will want to be um, I, I want to talk about this in, uh, uh, in an unofficial way, uh, and I will leave Karim to do the, uh, the, the policy talk. You see, generally in business, we are looking at tax as what we do. Right again, the network was the network was um, totally crappy. Uh, Abdullah, mm -hmm. please, okay, uh, that's Abdullah. Abdullah, please let me see your face. Karim, please send me an invite again, or you accept my invite. So, um, while Karim is trying to join us back, please complete your thoughts. Continue your thoughts, Ahmed Abdullah. You are saying something yeah. about you know you being a business person. Yeah. That the way you yeah. see government taxation and all. Yeah. Yes. Ah. So you see, if everything we do here, especially in Nigeria and in most other countries, are uh, uh, is double taxation. Take the act like 2019 or any other act. Like, what, 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 what do you mean by double, double taxation? Please like, break it down. I understand. Yeah. Or break yes, it down. yes. I'm, 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 going to, uh, uh, I'm going to break it down. Double in the sense that you would, I, I would pay the tax normal. And at, this, at the same time, most of the time you will see, I pay the tax for the federal government. It comes down to the state government. The same type of tax. tax. I pay it uh, in local government. And not only that, what I will spend uh, along the line of doing business that goes to security agencies uh, in, in a way you can call it corruption, for instance, you will notice that it's even more than what the tax has stipulated. I'll give you an example. Uh, one month ago, I cleared a container coming to my factory from Lagos. What I paid uh, on the road from uh, a papa port, for instance, for my container to come outside the port and from the port down to the factory in Kaduna, I spent close to 500,000, which is not uh, which is not in any way a tax or something. It's just the security agencies in the road. This one want to check, check this. This agency want to check that. Not their job. You didn't give them or you gave them, you still have to pay some from taxes, like they are just charging you for, for nothing. Right. Yes. 
Okay, okay, okay. Now, see, can we, uh, uh, now, can, so at the end we, of the day, we are paying excess. Uh, we despite we pay tax, we come all along the road. Uh, we pay. Uh, when you are producing, local government will come, state government will come, which is supposed to be covered by VAT, by every other tax that we are supposed to be paying. Okay, now so okay. I think the issue now, of double taxation is a big problem that is killing businesses now in Africa. Wait, 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 wait. You, you, you've chosen something to the hair, which I want Karim to pick me. Karim, can, can you hear me, please? Now, yes, now, I can hear you very well. Now, now um, Japa said something related to double taxation, and he's saying something about the federal government taking his own courts state government, local government, and these has, you know, crippled a lot of businesses and is still affecting many thriving businesses in the country. So you as a policy person who have been, you've worked in line with you know, policy information and policy making, what can you say about this double taxation thing going on? Is it a thing indicated in policy also, or is it a thing of corruption? You know, so it, 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 it is actually not a thing of corruption in the first instance. There are way, two ways to look at it. Because there are laws that provide some of these uh, tax. It's right when you talk of the taxation. A lot of policy, a lot of acts, like the Nance Act, like the Kama Act, that is company and life yeah, yeah. act matter. I, I wrote that in uh, Kama Act. Wait, that's the yes, Kama Act. Like yeah, the, act of 2020, yes. yeah. We also have education tax. So there's so many tax. Recently, last year, they introduced cyber security levy. Which is 0.5% of the uh, every uh, company, every company uh, profit and some other things. So different kinds of position. We also have excise duty for people who are so up importing, like like him. Uh, import, they also have to pay import duty if they want to export. They pay export duty. So technology capital tax. So we have education tax, personal income tax. If they have so many uh, staff, they have to pay. They also have to pay um, value added tax and personal. So those are some of the tax. It is a law that created them. It's not actually. And, uh, the, and, 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 and do you think? And, and do you think these laws are actually in, encouraging thriving business, or does it seem that some people escape? Now, this question is for you, Abdullah. Too, do you feel some people that are big tycoons escape many of these tags because they have friends in the government? And you, Abdul, um, Abdul, uh, Abdul Razak, do we need all these policies? to make a business, businesses in the country, country thrive. And there's, a, there's something sounding there like a call or something. If you can please mute it. Oh, it's, it's sounding. It's, from I where? don't know, maybe a phone or something. I don't know who it's coming from. I maybe think from Jaffa. It's or from you. No, it's not from me. Is it's it from, from me? From here. Like, somebody wants to join, right? It's, it's a call or something. Uh, Maybe, right? I don't okay, think it's from here. It's not from here. It's not what? I can't see anything that is making a call here, but oh. all right. I think it's that stop. It's a it's, a, it's it was actually a WhatsApp call. All right. How do you stop? Yes, can I can I move yeah, on? Yeah, 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 please, please. Yes. Even though my, my video is paused, please continue. I can hear you, please. Okay, okay, okay. These are taxes that are created by law. But what the current government wanted to do with their current uh, taxation is that, though when they came in, some of those taxes are not as much as this. Some are 3.5 percent, 2.0 percent, 2. Point, but they increase it. In, for example, in 2023, they increase the cyber security act from from 0.005 to 0.5 percent. They increase education tax from 3% to so 2.5% to 3%. So these are some of the things that the businesses are paying. Even SMA, small, small, small businesses are also paying this. And they have to pay, especially big business, because they have to file, file it as part of their tax return at the end of the year. And if it's not filed, they will not be able to get some of the benefits and some of the things that they need to do export and some other things. So they have to pay. So what the government was saying that is that they want to do harmonization. They want to harmonize all these uh, taxes to be able to ensure that Business only have to pay certain type of tax. But what people are saying is that government, they are not, they, they, people are not really trusting the government. Because when you create a tax and you ask people to pay it, so it's kind of a creating problem for the business. Not only big, big business, even the MSME, the small, small businesses are also facing this uh, same uh, problem. Coupled with the so a business environment and some of the insecurity that is going on in the country and some other things. So these are some of the issues that business are paying. Even not only business, even if they are doing small businesses, they are also collecting tax from them. 
all this is tax force. Here in Abuja, we see tax force collecting money from the people that are struggling to do their business. And, and, so and, they, and, and, to be honest, this is one of the reasons why I, 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 I feel we need to talk about this because business is one of our culture in Africa where we do business. Now, when government call me to say, okay, fine, you need to you need to be responsible for you know for the way you do business. Now it seems as if government is now coming to prey upon the little or the younger business people are needing to support, taking exorbitant amount from them, milking short business to the extent that those business does not even have two legs to dry to stand anymore. So this is for you, Jaffa, uh, Abdullah Jaffa. If you can hear me, are you still with us? And I apologize for this sound. I don't know where it is coming from. I promise you, I don't. I don't know where it's coming from. Hello. I don't know where this sound is coming from, honestly. So, yeah, um, no, no, my, my question to you, my question to you, do you really think these policies, now, you said you talked about integration. I, now, do you really think that this is going to work? Because government has tried and they've milked people, they've milked businesses with this you know, different range of... Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. Will it be from my hand? It's not from here. Let me check that one. Okay, everything is quiet now. Let me just invite the Lord Jaffa again. Jaffa, I invited you again. It's not from here. It's not from here. Can you check if your your your, your phone or you guys are not having WhatsApp call or anything? I just check it now. There is nothing like that. I don't have any WhatsApp call. I don't have any call. There's nothing like call here. I think we can continue. I can't find any call here. Okay. Let's let's just continue okay, because just continue. to be honest, I don't know. To be honest, I don't know where the sound is coming. I don't. Let's just continue and hope it will, it will stop. Because um, time is fast, man. No, 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 no. My, my question to you, Jaffa, my question to you is this. Do you think there are some business tycoons that have gone in bed with their friends and governments that they are not taxed heavily like others? Are, more, are some people more taxed than the others in business? Well, uh, this is common knowledge. Uh, you know, there are some a lot of government policies that uh there to support businesses but uh in the real sense of it it's not everyone that really got that support for instance the, there is uh uh, uh threat free zones in some states not every state for instance lagos in Nakano and some other places if you import uh any raw material in uh in those places you are not supposed to pay tax so the mighty Dongo Terry finally, for example, uh, is not paying import duty because it is situated in uh, in a green zone. Okay. You don't even have those type of facilities. So you 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 are certain that uh, uh, those people that are doing businesses manufacturing in those places will not get the opportunity uh, to to even. Uh, uh, get uh, duty-free import of raw materials, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, stuff like okay. that. So okay. even though um, I cannot. Okay. Uh, I remember. I remember, um, Abdullah. I remember there was a time where I think you 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 got the license to um, import chemical, a special chemical from India, and it was your own. Your company alone in the whole Nigeria that was licensed. Please correct me if I'm losing. 
track of it, you know, of the exactness of what I'm saying. Uh, and your company is the only company in, in the whole Nigeria that is giving that license to import that special chemical, uh, which is a new development in technology in terms of paint and lasting long. Now, my question is this. Why some people, people would think that you leverage on some sort of you know, special wings? And how does that journey, how, how was that journey? Take us through that journey of taxation importation duty and all because i know you personally we had a discussion about what happened to you um, in dubai if you can remember uh, in dubai where your flight was delayed and whatnot, whatnot but now particularly we are relating it to the nigerian context of how uh, uh, um, uh, you know you know in terms of business now how that importation and the laws and the policies and even the taxation that surrounds it has been so difficult or has it been a smooth sailing well, let me let, let me let me give you a, a small example very fast. Uh, just recently, uh, three months ago, I I intended to import uh, some chemicals, uh, which I have all the licenses and everything. I did from M, which is like a legal agreement between my company and the government on what exchange rate am I supposed to pay and, and stuff like that. So it was at that time I was supposed to pay exchange rate of 741 naira to dollar. So I calculated the duty I will pay for every container is around 6.5 million naira. By the time the goods arrived in Nigeria, suddenly the government just changed policy and it now became 1,500 and around 70 naira per dollar the exchange rate. Despite the fact that I have a legal document binding by CBN, which I already give my money to the bank that, okay, this is what I'm going to pay for duty. The duty just skyrocketed to around 50 million naira. They told you that you're going to pay the new duty, yes, not, uh, not the former I, agreement. Yes, uh, yes, not the former. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that was how I collect mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. container. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gazap, Mr. Gazap, I can see Mr. Gazap nodding his head, a policy man. So that ima way, imagine, Gazap, take us through, imagine take us through foreign policy. The problem is. Take us through foreign policy affecting businesses yes. in that line now. Imagine, Gazap, imagine, imagine the, the kind of pressure, of pressure was, and, and, the and the difficulty. And, and don't, don't forget, I'm importing special. Oh, trouble Gazap, in the so post and, and, and everyone that mishandled those things. Strong acid, things like that. No exception, nothing. No plan, nothing. No, no advance notice, nothing. Just pay us 15 million naira per container, or we hold the container, and it can kill people. Yes, it is a problem because when government does this policy, you see. Now, 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 wait. Now we are now at foreign policy and businesses in Nigeria, right? Now, please take us to no. I mean foreign exchange policy. Yes, Mr. Razak, I saw the way you nod your head. Now take us through that journey of foreign exchange policy in line with what Mr. Jafar just said. You see, when this uh, when the previous administration Buhari people came into being, the exchange rate is just one hundred eighty nine per dollars, or three, three, around that area. But it's moved to like uh, three sixty. So when government make this exchange rate, then when they want to, uh, they just change the exchange rate. They say they want to, what the current government is saying is that they want to um, increase the revenue and reduce subsidies from the exchange rate. What they used to say is that there are subsidies on the exchange rate. So when they removed, even before they removed the, uh, uh, the, the subsidy from the exchange rate, the exchange rate is, not, is never stable. So the implication is that when you are planning to import or import uh, any goods from abroad, whether Ghana or wherever abroad, as long as we want to import, and the initial engine rate that you use is 400. Let's assume it's 400. Let's assume the zone is 800. Let's assume it's 800. And as it at the time, even if it is the next day, as at the time you are, the container is coming, that it has come in and the, the custom, as a, and the CBN has directed the custom or custom on their own duty, on their own, have increased the exchange rate from that one, maybe one nera to two nera. It is mandated on the person to pay the two nera. Though the implication is that the person is feel discouraged. The cost of production increased. Everything about that business is increased, and it has to have implication on the people that the consumers okay. who are going to consume that okay. product. Um, and this is the problem. That is why some. 
Mr. Razak, you still have the floor. I just want to chip in this question because one person asks that why did government, why could government change an agreement that are already made between two parties? And now, Mr. Razak, take us through that foreign, how foreign exchange policy also affects, is this the reason why it affects the fact that once dollar rises in this regard, I could go to the market and find a tomato that is 200 yesterday before I slept is now 800 naira. Please take us through that journey too. Yes, it's, it's, the exchange rate has a lot of, you know, firstly, Nigeria is deeply imported. We are importing everything in this country. That's why the fact that the CBN has done a lot of intervention for the farmers and everything. Even with that intervention, even Dangote, a lot of intervention was given to Dangote. Even small small business, there are some incentives during COVID-19, honorarium, three months in honorarium, and some other things that government did for them. But in this case, when government think that, okay, this, they, 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 there is problem of, uh, they want to, they, talk, they don't tell the people, they just say they increase the exchange rate, that the exchange rate is increased. So it's very difficult because one so from four they are binding, era, wait, wait, so the government is binding not to agree to, a, to an already signed agreement to come back and, you know, an already signed agreement is an agreement. So please take us through that, that, that modality. That is the problem, that is what we are saying, that is what you are saying, that if the exchange rate is 450, it affects everybody. It's not only him. It's not only the business. Even Dan Kote, he said it recently when they interviewed him that as at the time, the, the exchange rate is one of the biggest problems that he has in, the, in, in when he was setting up his, his business and what he was setting up this uh, and uh, the vanity that he was taking. The exchange rate, because it's, it's something that killed the business. Because when the customer increased the, uh, the, uh, the, the import duty, because it is bound on the consumer to pay the import, the new import duty, that is it. So it is so, not, it is, okay. you can take them out and do other things. So, but that is, so, so is please, tell us why, tell us why a market woman who has 200 naira paper, yes, the last night, I'm breaking it to the simplest form now. It's Remember, a, this is shooter Because the person that produces the agricultural product, the fertilizer and everything is being imported. Most of us depend on, even I also have a farmland and most of these uh, fertilizer are not in the country. They imported them. So we are paying for the imported fertilizer, the machinery you are using, you are paying for them. So all these things has a multiplier effect on the consumer. And also when you know, remember when the exchange rate became a fertility and they said they want to use a, a market, a, my, they want to use a market stability to a man, yeah. market or something, I don't yeah. know how they call yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Market stability. Got, yeah. Yeah. Yes, the stability to be able to uh, start exchange rate based on the market, the, the market and demand. So what happened is that the exchange rate increased. When it increases, it affects the price of even the, the transportation, the fuel and everything. It affects everything. And the people that are transporting their own product from their own local area to the market, they also have the effect. It also has hmm. effect. Because you have to pay for transportation, everything. It has to affect everything. It doesn't okay, now, please, please. Now, I, I know this is a very sensitive conversation, conversation and it is highly, highly technical. Mr. Jafar, you are the best person to move into this industrial and trade policy because you're you are, you are into manufacturing and producing properly your company is involved in that industrial aspect so how has the industrial trade policy i read about in the nigerian automotive uh, automotive industry development plan Same. so how has this also been so effective in smooth relationship with you know with with with, with, with your with your organization a practical example because you are a CEO of an of, of, of a manufacturing um, company. Well, uh, for now, you see the the policies are not. I don't know where this sound is coming from. This sound is very annoying. Very. Annoying. Well, I don't know why. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, well, uh, to be fair to the policies uh, right now, this new policy is really not yet right. Uh, it's really too early for, for us to really judge uh, it. However, uh, it seems very, very nice. Uh, even though I have not seen any practical of yet. Um, if you look at the uh, what the government is promising. If you look at uh, the, the interventions that the government uh, is promising in, 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 in uh, stuff like this, uh, we haven't seen it yet. Effectively, 
practical. Yes, yes, practical. So I'm not sure if I don't know if there is any any industry or any company that have access this. Uh, I like don't don't worry, don't worry don't worry I don't want to put you on the spot I, really want I, I I love your diplomatic answer but I don't want to put you on the spot anymore. So Mr. Raza, you said something about karma and we are going back to karma. For people who don't know what what is karma, this is the Companies and Allied Matters Act. Uh, it was revised in 2020. So this is where I want us to talk about the le regulatory environment. We can't we can't we can't use the direct translation of businesses businesses model in European society in our society. So what is this effective regulatory environment? I, I, I'm taking, take, taking, taking shape like in our policy. Has it been a proper model or it has just been something that it has been crippling a lot of business SMEs? Because on the scale of percentage, if you look at many SMEs that has folded up over the years, even from, there's, there's an alarming percentage from the COVID era till now due to many many things and one of them one of the many factors is stringent policies so what is that regulatory environment you know in, in line with karma what is what is what is it taking hold looking like in direct you know you know in smooth doing business in Nigeria I think and Kama has different uh, provisions as related to different kind of uh, business that you are doing and the uh, different aspects of business in terms of uh, tax tax uh, revenue or uh, tax uh, taxes taxation in terms of uh, business education and uh, so many things involved in the business it's actually stated in the Kama. so regulation is not only Kama. there are so many laws that regulate how business is done and some other things and everything lies on the uh, government and the most important thing, even though the karma is there, even the, 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 the environment itself is ease of doing business. Nigeria was asked maybe around in the ease of this, doing business recently, 131 or so, in the ease of doing business, according to World Bank, made in 2022, out of one round, out of one round 90 uh, countries, we were, we ran 131 out of 190. So it seems that Nigeria is, you see, 13190. And some countries are also one, two, three, that they have a very good business regulation taxation so ease of business is a lot of things it's involved the infrastructure facility it's involved the how government is god trying to god bless you. God bless you. God bless you. because it's uh, it's also I, I wrote infrastructure development for the so i don't know why mr razak in your conversation you're always 10 steps ahead but continue because everything link you cannot remove one from the other yes definitely. if it is one that linked to the other even in terms of business environment now a lot of security issues the FDI, the foreign direct investment, people do not want to come into Nigeria to invest because of the security. It's not only the regulatory, it's part also part of regulatory because it is the responsibility of the government to make the environment conducive for business to come in. That is why the Nigerian FDI has reduced it drastically from almost 470 something, from 400 and something, um, 2.2 billion US dollar in 2020, 2014 to almost 371 million dollars in 2023 so you can see how the thing reduced because people are not coming to invest because of all this uh, insecurity the regulatory double position that uh, 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 my malam uh, uh, Gav, uh, Gavar mentioned yeah. so a lot of things are involved in these things and it is the responsibility of the government to make it happen if the government does not make the environment happen people will go away or they will not come look at what is happening in uh, 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 in lagos as regard to the new uh, construction of this uh, uh, coastal line and a lot of business were distorted. So these are some of the oh, regulatory sir. environment that you are talking sir. about. It's important. Sir. The regulatory environment is not only that law. It's the cross cut issues which have to be dealt with. It's really sad. Oh, Mr. Jaffa, uh, um, Jaffa, I know you, your businesses are international. You've done deal, you still deal, you brought Nigeria, like Nigerian and Indian coalition and lots, you know, UAE and all. So my question to you is going to be direct. From, are you with me? Uh, please, can you repeat? Yeah. Uh, I, didn't, I, I didn't get to your question. Yeah, no, I've not asked the question. I've not asked the question. So my, from your experience, how is doing business right now? How is it like? I just want you to be so plain with us. Now you are the one, you are the field player. So I want you to take that uh, conversation from the international area of doing business and 
the local talent of doing business. How has it been? How is it now? How is it going? Uh, well, my brother, uh, the truth of the matter, things are extremely, extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, doing business uh, doing in, business Nigeria in Nigeria and within and West, West. West Africa is extremely difficult. However, it's a challenge that if we solve this problem, you know, whenever there is a problem, uh, solving that problem brings opportunities yeah. and bring a lot of profitability. But right now, every aspect of it is, is really difficult. Take, for instance, uh, the recent coup, coup d'etat in Niger. Uh, when the coup d'etat uh, uh, happened, I have about 17 trucks of uh, goods that are already in Niger that are about to offload when the, when the coup happened. So uh, my trucks got hooked up there. Uh, it, it took almost one month before we were able to bring them out because the border is closed and uh, stuff like that. We, we have a lot of payment backlog in, in, in Niger that when the SWIFT system, we, we Niger was banned from the SWIFT system, and so they could not transfer the money to, to Nigeria. And that is credit we take from banks here in Nigeria, which mm -hmm. interest is accruing. Our investors are, are, are waiting for their dividends and for their money to come back. The trucks are hired, you know, stuff like that. So a lot of things are very, very unpredictable. What about, business, the you... what, what, what about the reputation of Niger as a Nigerian business in the international terrain? How has it been? Uh, yeah, well, what I I had is different from what I am seeing. And this is the good news for, for us as Nigerians. Uh, anywhere I go to do business, they will tell me stories that, okay, Nigerians have done this, Nigerians have done this. But we see your, different, your business is different. What is happening? Why is it so different? Stuff like that. So I come to understand that whenever we try to do uh, good and legitimate businesses, then even if our reputation is, is at stake, but people really judge you most of the time by the interaction you did with them. It's a matter of just start. As soon as you start, people will understand that, okay, this is bringing prosperity and this is different from what we know. I, I was stigmatized in many countries, mm -hmm. uh, like you mentioned, in Dubai and places like that. But at the long run, uh, it, it becomes very easy and a reference point that, okay, uh, we have seen a, a business that is legitimate, that is genuine, so there is hope. So that side of it, I am, I am really encouraging all business people, all entrepreneurs, to just close their eyes and forget about the reputation issue. Okay. Because okay. by the time you start, it will just show that your business is good and it is ready to bring prosperity to everyone. Okay. Uh, Mr. R thank you very much. Uh, uh, we, we're calling it a wrap already. Um, um, Mr. Razak, I want to take you from the infrastructural development policy. I wrote down here the economic recovery and growth plan. See, yeah. that question is... Yeah. How is it going? How is the economic and recovery good plan going? Most especially from our survival from 2020, COVID. Hey, listen, the economic recovery and growth plan was introduced in 2017 and it ended in 2020. It was succeeded by ESP, the Economy Sustainability Plan, which also ended in 2021. Then that one was now uh, succeeded by the National Development Plan, which is now 2021 to 2025. So that year's GDP has ended. So ESP, which follows, has ended. What we are doing, working on now is National Development Plan 2021-2021 and Agenda 2050. You get this right now, Agenda 2050. Yes, Agenda, uh, Agenda 2050. That is the plan that we have now. So these are the current policy that we are using. And the National Development Plan has a lot, like a three indicator from microeconomy, uh, population management, from trade, from family aid and so on. So there are a lot of things that are indicated in that uh, development plan that we are currently implementing. And from that development plan, Nigeria is trying to reduce about, uh, uh, remove around 100 million from uh, poverty in the next 10 years, between 2021 to 2030. So they cannot do it without the business. Because if you look at some of the strategic policy uh, and uh, program that they want to do, is based on SME, uh, SME into a, into a, um, a management of the business, make ease of, ease of business, 
So those are some of the key uh, programs that they want to do to be able to, to SME. So there's a lot of funding that the government is pushing in place to be able to achieve this. And the problem is the issue of when you say you want to move people out of property from uh, empowering people, from uh, uh, building businesses, from inviting people, investors into the country, and you are now having a lot of challenges that we are now facing to so remove people out of property. Let me remind you, the property rate in Nigeria, when the ERGP was introduced in 2017 to 2020 was 40, 40% of Nigeria. Now, in 2020, remember I told you the year GDP ended in 2020 and it's an economic revolving plan because of the issue that happened in 2014, global economic uh, disaster. Mm -hmm. And also, we now have year GDP in 2020 and 2021. And between that 2020 government policies to 2022, the unemployment increased from 80 million to 133 million. And we cannot do it without uh, this uh, business mm -hmm. issue and uh, making business environment okay. so that people can employ people. Because even the FDI, the FDI that I'm talking about now, it's reduced drastically. In Q1, 2023, it was 48 million dollars. And if you compare it to 2014, which is about uh, 200 and something million dollars. So this thing has reduced drastically and government needs to do a lot of things to be able to reverse some of these things. And one of these is insecurity. Because insecurity is also denying people from growing, doing business. Yeah. People don't want to establish business anymore. And, and foreign investors can cannot, 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 cannot be safe. People are not safe. The agriculture are, cannot be safe. Even the agricultural growth has reduced from 4.1 percent. Uh, 4. Uh, 4, uh, 4, it has reduced from 4.1 something percent in 2016. Agro it is now reduced. To 4. Hmm. Huh? So it has now reduced to 0.1 percent in Q1 2024. So these are some of the issues. Even agriculture is not growing, the manufacturing is not growing, even the service sector is struggling to grow. So these are some of the challenges that the business are facing. And if the business are facing this, you know what happened. The bank will just restrain, to restrain people. The businesses will, they will reduce the number of staff that they have. And we have seen it in reality. Ask Japan how many staff he has in, the, in those days and how many staff he has today. How much is he paying now? The current, they are now talking about the current uh, uh, minimum wages. Who is going to pay the minimum wage if the business environment is not Japan. Effective? So this issue, are you can't pay the issues, you can't pay the and they have to the implement wage. it to be able to pay. And if they mm -hmm. do not increase their own minimum, it will affect their staff because <laughs> the inflation will grow. <laughs> inflation is now is thirty three percent. It is going to grow when the, this uh, uh, minimum wage uh, will finally approved. Mm -hmm. So it's also coming back to people that are doing. It. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you for that insight. Honestly. How they, will they pay it? Where will they going to see the money when mm -hmm. the, 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 the level? The cost of this, mm. the cost of production has increased, the, everything is increasing, the materials, everything the, the staff has to pay because they will complain that the house rate has increased, mm. that they need to increase their salary, mm. the transportation from their house to where they produce the paint. So these are some of the issues. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Some of the issues. I appreciate that. Um, I can see, honestly, you two, both of you are two passionate people that I know. I remember Hello. I then back in Egypt. Whenever he's talking on the table, he's always, you know, <laughs> he's very passionate about Nigeria. We are passionate people about our country. And I can tell you for one that uh, Mr. Japa is passionate about Nigeria. Honestly, he is someone who actually wants to see a working Nigeria. If he doesn't even believe in it, I don't think he would, he would, he would still be sitting his, you know, his business, the head of peace in his soul. So this, these, are, these are people who believe in the project. Nigeria. And to be honest, I am also someone who believes in the project called Nigeria, in the country called Nigeria, in the nation called Nigeria, in the future called Nigerian people. And I know that as passionate as we are, we sometimes we can get emotional. I can sense that even in Mr. Abdurazak's conversation. And uh, from, from, from what Mr. Japa has also discussed with me, from even his, from even his um, encounters in India, in, <clears throat> in Dubai, which I know we don't want to bring to the open, I, I, can, I know that these are people that are very, very passionate about Nigeria. I, I, I pray that by our time, when it's our own time to play, which we are already playing this way, we are going to see to the working Nigeria that we actually deserve and want. So now this is a wrap, and this is this is usually what I always tell my, my speakers whenever I'm calling it a quit. So I'm going to throw it open. What is your future projection? Like in the next five years, 10 years, what do you think? You believe that is the way we should move if we are going to move in the right direction to achieve the positive result about the Nigeria that we want. What is that in in line of business and you no know, government policy? So what is that right direction we should move? So I think Mr. Mr. Uh, Abdul Azar should take it 
because he was on fire. I don't want to pour water on that fire. <laughs> See, for any business, ask Mr. Java, for any business to succeed in this country, energy is the first thing. There must be energy security. If there is no energy security, we cannot achieve anything. And as now, the total number of the total mega, the what are they calling the, 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 the uh, megawatt generation or what this uh, their own term, this uh, Nepal people, is just say uh, 5,000 megawatts per uh, Nigeria. Nigeria of 200 and something million people. Where South Africa is producing, uh, is producing 100 and something thousand megawatts, 100 and something megawatts, megawatts, 100 and something megawatts. We are still producing 5,000 megawatts of electricity. And there's no light, you can see no light. No light since yesterday, there's no light. I'm using my phone. I want to work. I cannot work. How can I be productive? I have work to deliver. I cannot. Be, I have to go and buy a petrol. Do you know how much they are selling petrol now? Mm. And here, there's no way you can buy the petrol in the. You have to go and do all this. Uh, 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 what do you call it? The black okay. market to be able to. Okay. Power in, a, in, in, a, in an oil producing. In a country, in a high producing country. Mm. In a high producing country, why don't we? If we do not be able to achieve uh, this uh, uh, solve issue of energy, we will still be the same. In the next five years, we will still be discussing this same thing. In the next five years, in the next ten years, we will still be discussing. Energy is the first thing. We will be able to ensure that the energy security. If there is no energy security, how can Mr. Jabal, if he is producing, how many diesel is he burning every day? How many diesel? How many bank bank are burning diesel every day in our office? We are using diesel every day. Even the solar system is is more is, is not every time the solar will do this thing. This diesel, we are burning diesel every day. Diesel now is 1,000 something in Nigeria. We are producing, we have diesel in abundance. We have oil in abundance. If we are not able to achieve, to, to be able to deliver, uh, to give us, the government is not able to give us the energy security. In the next 10 years, we will still be talking the same thing. And infrastructure, road infrastructure, because of the movement of the goods from one place to another. And the energy is the most important thing. Whereas uh, square security, uh, the electricity, these are some, these are important things to be able to drive an industrial economy. Thank you, sir. Ah. Thank you so so much. So now from Mr. Jaffa, Mr. Jaffa, so Mr. Jaffa, my question the same question. What will be your projection in the next 10 years? And how do you, what will be your own projection? I said, if we move in this direction, we will be moving in the right way towards the Nigeria world. Well, uh, uh, you know, contrary to most uh, people, I think there is a positive outlook. I'm uh, looking for, well, I understand all the problems, the energy security, the insecurity, uh, stuff like that. Uh, just to go through what she just said, uh, for the last 10 years that I have been uh, in the manufacturing sector, in all the factories that I have, we have never used the uh, electricity provided by the government. We are always 100% generating our electricity Why so? using Why so? diesel generators. Why? Because we cannot afford to have any disruption in power. We are dealing with chemicals, and if we have any disruption, it's going to be catastrophic. So, we, we, our business plan is not even considering using uh, uh, this. And it, yes, it will have give us more than twenty percent additional profit if we have power from mm. the con from Nigeria. More but than twenty percent profit. Yes, wow. yes, additional. <laughs> but but not 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 to stand it. You know, the government is looking at other things like uh, mining sector for this. Nigeria is blessed with a lot of minerals that are supposed to be used for renewable technologies. Uh, sustainability these days, you know, we have lithium, we have all these uh, stuffs that are needed for the energy transition in the world. And a lot of factories now are coming up in Nigeria. Despite the insecurity, despite the power problem, despite all the problem, but, but because the world really needs those minerals right now, uh, recently, two factories in, in Nasara are commissioned for lithium. In Kaduna, we have another one coming up. Despite all the problems in Zamfara State, we still have a lot of foreign companies that are coming in right now with their own. Nigerian government is providing a lot of security for them to be able to mine those minerals out. For them. So if Nigeria... For yes. Them. Yes. So now, if this government can maintain the tempo, of investment in this critical mineral sector, it's going to give the Nigerian economy another breath in the coming five years. Okay. And that okay. will boost 
that will be a very very big boost it, it will be like the oil boost the oil boom we have oh. so and now it depends on if the government is able to maintain the tempo and make it really easy for these companies to really invest uh, so i look at it that way and all the businesses i know are not even relying on nigerian energy simple nobody is relying on that oh thank you very much but um if we look from because you are uh, i want to believe you are a large scale producer, producer investor but if you look at the SMEs, the SMEs, which I know uh, uh, Mr. Gazako would bear in mind when he was having that conversation, SMEs cannot bear to say they will go outrightly without using power. Power is needed. So, you know, and these people also make money in circulation, business go on, they run the economy. And these people, and these SMEs are highly, highly important in the economic structure the 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 self employment structure in the country so uh, you guys are valid 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 prior positions and this is the reason why i brought you guys on board because i knew that uh we need two intelligent minds uh you guys are guys are, i i so much respect you know, the moment I, I i had conversation with you guys i i so much respect and i i've been following your work so far I want to say a big thank you for you know coming because this is a conversation if we're gonna have I know we can spend two days here. Nobody's ready for that conversation. But it's just so so sad that we've got into this position. I, I understand the part where we are also still hopeful that okay, there's a glimpse of hope. But at that, we cannot overlook the fact that things are actually things have gone extremely bad also. And so we, we are just weighing the scale and saying that oh if we don't we are not careful it is going to go you know when the scale is, is going some one is going to it will not be balanced it might fall it might even destroy the whole scale uh, system everything so um a big shout out to you guys i, I don't know if i'm going to jump in nigeria real soon i'm going to touch down to kaduna and i think you are inquire mr Abugazak, if i'm right Abuja, Walk into the Asuru Rock and let them know this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Abuja. I, 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 I have friends at Lube, Lube Housing Estate. So Abuja ah, is yeah. one, one of my favorite cities. So uh, apparently if I touch down into the city, I'll give you a big shout. And I know if I touch down to Kaduna, I must be give Mr. Mr. My friend Jaffa and uh, Kautumi and um, Amina and Aminu. I mean, I don't know, I don't know, is Imam, is Imam Kaduna or Imam is in, I think she's Abuja. in Dubai now. Abuja. Abuja. Okay, okay, okay. Abuja, Abuja, okay. So I'm going to give you guys a big, big shout. Thank you very, very much. I know you guys are very, extremely busy people. Thank you for taking your time out to enlighten people, to educate people. I know teenagers, keep, they keep scrolling my, my posts and that is what I want. Even after you've seen all this TikTok dance and everything, there should be a post where you go to and you know that I want to learn and this topic, uh, um, this guy is going to bring someone that we can trust and we can listen to. And that is what you've done. You've done justice to the topic. I think so is there any last word you want to say before we call it a quit? I think in terms of uh, mineral, uh, Mala, uh, Mala Jafar talk about the uh, um, uh, mine and industry. The Minister for Mine and Industry is now constrained that uh, any, any natural resources, all this uh, gold and everything, lithium, that any foreign company is taking out now, they have to refine it. The value chain must be done in Nigeria before it's taken to abroad. I don't know if he's able to uh, take down some of those things. We'll be able to have many job opportunities for Nigerians, and uh, Nigeria will also boost its own uh, GDP in the long and run. So that is what the current minister is talking about now. now. No, no natural resources. No extraction of natural resources. You must process no. it in the country. <laughs> It must process it in the country before you take it out. So you have to come and to come and establish your company, process it, and now take out the other like, value chain outside the country. So that's what the minister is trying to do now. If he's able to do it, it will be a benefit for the country. But a lot of powers towards you. I hope and I pray for him to be able to succeed anyway. So wow. it can only be Any last word, Mr. Mr. Jamai, hey, like uh, like uh, uh, this guy, this uh, my uh, and Dan what he said. He said. When he wanted to uh, establish his uh, microchemical company, a lot of people discouraged him not to do it. That they even tell him that he's going to lose. But now he succeeded. I also pray that uh, the minister succeed. Amen. In this so that a lot of people Amen. 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 Amen.
Any last well, point? Uh, just just uh, last point. Uh, this the major problem I think is killing the SMEs from going up is that double taxation that I really told you about in the first time. Because uh, uh, when when you import any input into Nigeria and the duty is extremely high, it's going to spread down to the SMEs. If you are an SME, you cannot even import anything that you want as an input, even if it machinery or, or raw material or anything. Because we are not producing these machineries here in Nigeria. If you, have, if you are a farmer, we don't do most of the pesticides, most of the weeds, uh, the, the stuffs we need. So it has to bring, be brought into Nigeria. And with this double taxation the government is doing, and without taking the real agreement between importers and government, any day, any time the government is ready to change any policy, that is what is killing these businesses. And it cannot make you plan. As a business, you need to plan. You need to have a budget. But in Nigeria, if you want to do a budget, you have to do two times or three times what you are seeing right now because you don't know what will come up. So the government needs to be really serious and hold themselves accountable for standard policy, policy that will not change overnight. That is the major thing I think is killing SNEs in Nigeria. Nothing more, nothing less. Any other thing can be managed, but bad government policy cannot be managed. Hmm. Thank you very much. Anything can be managed, but bad government policy can be managed. Just like Umawa Jibola just said, um, do you think all the persons who follow the minister that have said to reform the charities in, in this country? That's another issue, like um, Abdul Ghazbar said, the so much total of power and all that he prays. We know what is going on, but we just pray. He said something that is sensible that we can project in that light that if things go well in that light, things will get better. But we just pray because we understand our political structure again. It's another chaos, it's another drama on its own. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Abdul Razak and Mr. Abdullah Jafar for honoring me. I do not take you guys for granted. I know you guys are very, very busy people. And I know the people of Nigeria will remember this, that you took your time out at some point in time as passionate as you are, whenever you uh, hear that call, you always answer. I always call it an ancestral call. And this is one of my, me answering the ancestral call by this, creating this space called Street and Cathedral. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And this is me calling it a quit. And to all those people who join us, I want to say a big shout out to you. Thank you very much to those people that have been consistent in commenting uh, on YouTube, on, on Facebook, on Hex. I want to say a big shout out thank you thank you and those people that have been taking this material to project to other people to listen to take notes and everything thank you very much uh we hope that one day we are going to see that nigeria and africa that we want and we'll be part of the major player that will make it work so thank you very much guys thank you, thank you.